Why the triangle though? The triangle, you know, I was working with different shapes. For me, there's a triangular quality to the NFT structure, whereas before there was a, a dualistic relationship between the, the collector and the physical object. It was almost like a set of code that I had to execute on a daily basis. So the first part of the code was to make the triangle shape. And then the second part of the code was to activate it through color and line. Like, it was almost like I was a mini, yeah, a mini computer following my own computer program. I can imagine what goes on in your mind. Hello, I'm Shannon Twyla and welcome to Invictus Podcast. My guest today is Matthew Hindley, who is a painter. Matthew, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. How long have you been painting, Matthew? Were you, did you start at, at kindergarten or did you start much later? No, I've been painting and drawing my whole life, but um, as a professional artist, probably for about 15 to 20 years. What were your initial inspirations and what continues to inspire you now? Sure. I'm just inspired by everything around me, by just by life and by the possibilities of, of art as a, as a medium of expression. What's your favorite I'm medium? Currently, oh, my favorite medium is oil and canvas. I mean, it's the complete classic traditional medium, but it's still the most versatile and the, and the richest and the most kind of long, long lasting and just the absolute kind of Rolls Royce of, of art materials. Mm -hmm. But I also love, um, I love watercolor and, and working on paper. So I was right about kindergarten yeah. because that's, that's where you yeah. get your watercolors and, and, and paper. Yeah. Now we walk into the NFT space. Do you think that your art is going to be influenced in which way by being a part of the NFT lab? Well, I mean, it's such an exciting addition to, to the art world. And I think it's going to contribute in so many different ways. One of the most exciting things is the kind of royalty system that's built into it, which is just so kind of needed, I think, in, in, in the current art world. The same as musicians, you should, art painters should get ongoing um, revenue from from the works and you know as the way that it works now when when, it, when you sell it then collectors make the, the profit i think it's so amazing that that's something built in to create ongoing income streams for, for artists because often artists aren't in the best sort of position in the art world and i think nfts are something that's almost reshuffling the power paradigm and creating um a lot more powerful artists which I think is super exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a royalty system that really works for musicians. Yeah. So it, it should it should be yes. able to work for you too. Now, talk to me it about should. your work for that you're bringing to the Out of Africa collection, because I think you, your work is going to be the largest work represented. Can you talk me through yes. it when it started, how, what inspired it and what we should expect? Instead of doing one sort of large, high value piece, I wanted to sort of split the energy and, and allow more people access to my work. So I did instead um, a large series of works on paper um, and those works were done um, on a daily basis. So each day I would make one, and um, it became a kind of a meditation and a sort of like a daily practice, which was so interesting because I created a very tight structure. So there's the triangle, which is the same throughout. And it was incredible how within that really tight structure, um, there was so much variety, you know, each day, the mood you're in, the weather, the, the atmosphere of the day creates such a different work within within the same exact structure. I was really interested in that. So it was kind of like um, a meditation on sameness and difference, you know, on something where each one is very recognizable, but also completely unique. The reason I did so many is because I wanted to create a sort of a body of work that, that people could choose from. And, um, and that was really interesting. Why the triangle, though? The triangle, you know, I was working with different shapes. For me, there's a triangular quality to the NFT structure, whereas before there was a, a dualistic relationship between the, the collector and the physical object. And now there's this kind of third entity, which is the NFT, which is kind of tying the collector artwork together in a different way. And that, to me, it's almost like in a triangular because there's, there's, it's a triangular relationship. So the triangle kind of on, on one level represents that different relationship. And also, I just really like the structure. It's, it's a very clean, beautiful, kind of um, repeatable compositional device. So what I wanted was almost like to give myself a set of instructions as if I'm a computer. It was almost like a set of code that I had to execute 
on a daily basis. So the first part of the code was to make the triangle shape. And then the second part of the code was to activate it through color and line. Like it was almost like I was a mini, yeah, a mini computer following my own computer program. I can imagine what goes on in your mind. The the colors you use though, they, they seem very light, pastely colors. Is is that on purpose or do you do you have some that are really bold colored? Yeah, no, I have a whole range of different ones. I have some very bold colored ones. I'm also using a lot of really beautiful watercolors that some of them are ground from stones, like the magenta is ground from um, from amethyst, which is really beautiful. And so there's a lot of like, um, in real life, there's a lot of shimmery uh, kind of iridescent glowing qualities to the surface that you don't necessarily see in the, in the photograph. Well, I was going to ask, how does that translate online? Do you think there's going to be some animation involved? Are they interactive? Or do you think maybe they they well represented as they are? I've seen that the the designers have been animating them, and I quite like what they've what they've done so far. So I'm I'm enjoying this this journey of of um, seeing how how other people are kind of like involved in the presentation of, of the NFT. But um, I'm it's important to me that on discovery of the physical object, there are surprises that are not necessarily known um, from the digital, so that there's a, a discovery and a kind of a sense of adventure and, and a journey with, with the work. So when you physically get the work on your hand, if you do, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Well, I, I, you know, in talking to everybody here, there's excitement about the NFT space. There's excitement about registering. Some of us would be new to it because I'm a baby boomer and I'm thinking I need to be more careful about this stuff. But are you, do you have any apprehension about losing people my age as baby boomers to your work if you put it on on this platform and yet excited about getting younger people to be introduced to your work yeah uh, uh, i guess I, I didn't think about um losing an audience to me it seems like um definitely that I'll, I'll be gaining an audience through through the but i guess you're right i mean i, I probably will cut out certain um, demographics but i still think that at the end of the day it's it's worth this um, it's worth it to try to mm-hmm. see, you know, what happens. Mm-hmm. It's super exciting. Well, I was about to say we live in exciting times because we're facing new challenges in a new world. And, and of course, the pandemic gave us the time to kind of re-examine how we want to be seen and, and see the rest yeah. of the world. Did, did you find that with the pandemic as well? That's what happened to you? It, it just sort of clarified why I was making work, you know, the... Um, the kind of potential that art has to bring joy and to bring a kind of a sense of escape to, to people. Not that I'd forgotten it, but it wasn't sort of central to my practice. You know, when you're a professional artist, um, you really you have a whole lot of deadlines, you have shows, you have gallery visits, you create a body of work, then you get ready for this solo here, then you get ready for that. And, and you're kind of continuously um, creating and, and fulfilling all your projects that you have to do. And, and you don't often stop and sit and think about like what, is underneath all this. What am I really doing? What's the real point of it? And um, but definitely, like through Instagram and through sharing my work on Instagram during the pandemic, and also just the way people reacted to to my work, I, I kind of realized that I had the opportunity to give people a complete escape into another kind of like universe, and and, and to provide like joy and freedom and just like a kind of like a dream, you know, like. You can really um, offer this alternative reality. That became so clear to me during the pandemic when I was just, when I became, when, you know, you become so insular and your work has become, your work becomes so kind of personal again. So that was kind of my journey of discovery through the pandemic for sure. Your work comes from a good place, it comes from you. I like that. Yeah. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your patience and of good course. luck with the Trinity series. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Take care.